My, well, it's not really a question for the panel. It's more of a, a comment. Just, I'm a young, I guess, musician. I'm in my uh, final year of studying music and I'm uh, planning on trying to make some sort of a uh, living of playing music. Um, we were talking about the music scene just in general on the Central Coast and in Australia and how it's quite uh, non-existent, could you say? <laughs> Although, um, my comment is more about like just the general scene on the Central Coast, how there is probably 30 pubs who Friday, Saturday and Sunday will have a, some sort of an artist in there who's not really playing their own music, they're just playing I don't know, cold chisel covers and Beatles covers <laughs> and rubbish like that. An ABBA. Um, I, I put my hand up, I, I do it sometimes every now and then. Got to earn a living. And that's mm -hmm. what it is, but it's um, it's a shame that all these places that are filled with DJs and cover artists mm -hmm. aren't filled with people making new art and making their own music. Well, I remember back in the 70s, in the cold chisel days, that was a boom for Australian live music. Mm. So many bands came out of that doing original songs. Dorian, surely you've got to stand on this. Well, I, you know, I, what can I say? I totally agree with that question. In fact, about two weekends ago, I was playing in an RSL club uh, courtyard on my own, which I'd called the tumour set, because <laughs> people would come out after playing the pokies and have a smoke. And, this and I'd be looking at them and they'd be looking at me. And I'd be singing at them and they'd have a smoke. Not bad. And they go back in and play the folks, you know. And I thought, my life has reached a new low end. But, um, you know, I, it pays the rent. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, you know, that's... I think um, one of your guests was right when they said, and I say this to a man here, diversify. You know, we teach, we do horrible gigs, we do great gigs, you know. And, um, you know... Uh, I've got a little regular thing, I'm going to plug my little regular pizza shop. I play a little pizza shop in Evoke every second Thursday night with a little Hammond organ trio, a little jazz organ trio. I've read about that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fantastic and we have a great little crowd and we just built it up and built it up mm. and don't get a lot of money and I just absolutely love it and that's fantastic and then I'll go and do the, the tumour set and I'll feel like <laughs> cutting my throat and then I'll go and do that gig and I'll just think music's great, I love what I do, I love my life and then I hate my life. And I love my life, so it's it's just that, you know, that I, rocky I guess road. My question isn't so much about, like, all my comments, sorry. Is, <laughs> I mean, I, I do that stuff as well. And it's, uh, like, I do, I work hours and hours and hours and hours I put of work into my original stuff. And, uh, and then I'll go and do a covers gig with a mate, which I do absolutely no rehearsal for. I get paid 600 bucks. It's really easy. You know, mm. at home. And the thing is that um, the general public doesn't really understand the difference between, I mean, a covers gig and an originals gig. And so mm. I don't have like a wall with people that do covers. I mean, I do it mm. myself and it's all good, it's all music. Um, but I think it's just like a general, yeah. uh, the general public being, I don't know, mm. tapped into just culture in general. Well, we are going to do a show. Sorry, we are going to do a show devoted to music in a couple of episodes, and one of our main topics is going to be the lack of venues mm. for that kind of music here on the Central Coast. So we're going to have a deeper look at that in a couple of months. Just one thing I will say, final thing on that is that that was why I created the Bogan Song Cycle. Is that I, I felt like sort of sitting in the local RSL club singing New York, New York. You know, like, you know, if you can make it there, you've made it. You know, and, was, you know, like, <laughs> and I'm just thinking, what's wrong with this picture? So I thought, wouldn't it be funny to create a whole lot of jazz songs? That, but all the themes are all about the Central Coast. Mm -hmm. You know, so to change sort of Duke Ellington's caravan to Caravanistan, all about people living in caravan parks and things like that. So to try and kind of reach out, and it's hard when you're playing original music. It's really hard. But mm -hmm. if you don't do it, you know, you're not actually developing as an artist, you really just... I, I don't think that it's really like a lack of venues per se on the coast. I mean, for the size of our population, we have heaps of places where you can get a gig, but I think it's just more general awareness from venue owners and also people actually sort of caring. Like, I've done plenty of gigs where it's obvious where the spot would be to put the band, but for some 
ridiculous reason they'll put you over in that corner over there mm. facing the opposite direction like with the door shut with all the lights off and like one old lady there who's complaining that you don't play like the Bee Gees or something. <laughs> it's just, it's really bizarre. I s- yeah, yeah, I just can't get my head around it. It just makes me think of the need for um, arts bodies out in the community that are fostering talent mm. and enabling that um, opportunities to present your creative your output to sympathetic, receptive audiences. And there seems to be a, a, a link in the mm. chain that's missing there where we've got young creatives that have honed their craft. We have venues there. We just need um, people to advocate mm. for you know, um, the appreciation of those arts and crafts. And it comes from grassroots. Perhaps it also needs to come from the top down as well, mm. where... Um, where, where we see more, um, yeah, I, I suppose, advocating and, and fostering of the and region's of, creative mm, talent. There's lots of little groups, like our group that are making this show, like the groups oh, that you organise, you know, that are trying to do that in their particular fields to foster unity and to um, uh, get everyone together mm. to help promote young yeah. artists and original music and whatever it might yeah, be. It's very hard too. I, f- I feel your pain a bit because it's I'm a photographer, you're a musician, but... You know, we built this beautiful gallery and we just thought because we built a gallery at the start, people would come because why wouldn't they? But you're doing great music and you want to play it, but why won't people come? And I think that's that's mm. an endemic part problem with artists alike mm. is it's, it's a trick to try and create yourself a brand which which mm. works, where you fit and appeal to that market. And I the think idea that's is, I the, think, the if trick. If you can get the original work out there, people will say, oh, love this do more of it, mm. but they're just not used to being exposed to new work all the time. Just show me the old stuff that I like, play me the old songs that I like, play me some BGs. I think one of the problems is that so while there's a lot of drinking places up here, <clears throat> they all tend to be very, very similar and oh. very big. And the best thing, or the easiest thing to do in that situation is you have your ABBA band and your cold chisel band and so on. That's just the easy thing to do. Doesn't offend anyone, pulls all the punters in. Mm. Uh, one thing that's happened down in Sydney is there are loads of small bars. My daughter's got one in Chippendale, and you can play music in the small bars, so there's a whole new set of venues that aren't big pubs where you have ABBA. Newcastle's going that way too. Yeah. Very, And very that, that's much more, yeah. that, that's like a cultural sort of yeah. flywheel, you know? Yeah.